Good morning. Welcome to Bethlehem Lutheran Church and a very special welcome to any guests who may be in worship today with us for the 24th Sunday after Pentecost. Today's liturgy is Divine Service 1, which is on page 151 in the front of our hymnal. We begin our service this morning by singing our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We say together our introit. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. At your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, how lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed, for a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord is a shining shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. At your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to His people on earth.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, send forth your Son to lead home his bride, the church, that with all the company of the redeemed, we may finally enter into his eternal wedding feast through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading this morning comes from Amos chapter 5. Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord. Why would you have the day of the Lord? It is darkness and not light. As if a man fled from a lion and a bear met him. Or went into the house and learned and leaned his hand against the wall and a serpent bit him. Is not the day of the Lord darkness and not light? and gloom with no brightness in it. I hate, I despise your feasts, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the peace offerings of your fattened animals, I will not look upon them. Take away from me the noise of your songs. To the melody of your harps, I will not listen. But let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading this morning comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, Even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, and with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom? shall we go you have the words of eternal life hallelujah hallelujah our gospel reading this morning comes from the gospel of matthew chapter 25 glory to you o lord jesus said the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. 
At this time, I now invite the children to come forward for a children's message. Good morning. So I have a question for you. Do you know what this is? A flashlight, yeah. So when I click this button, it should have light, right? Yeah? There's no light. Why is that? Might not have any batteries. That's okay. Let's see. Yeah, no battery. Let's fix that. Yeah. That 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 never has broken. Oh. Well, hopefully, this isn't broken. So this should turn on, right? Yeah. yeah? Works, right? Yeah? <laughs> That's good. We need a flashlight to see in the dark. So, today we heard about a story that Jesus told about uh, some women who were waiting for their friends to come who just got married. And so they were waiting for them to show up to go to the wedding feast. And it was uh, getting kind of dark at night, uh, and at that time... Uh, they didn't have street lights like we do today, so it got really, really dark. And so those women who were waiting for their friends, they had lamps. But kind of similar to this flashlight, uh, the lamps made light, but they used oil to, make, to light the fire. And as the night went on, the couple got delayed, and they came pretty late. And by the time that they were coming, and as someone said that they were on their way, uh, some of those, uh, those women uh, realized, well, they ran out of oil. They didn't have enough uh, in their lamps to have light for when their friends came so that they could greet them. And so they asked uh, the other women, hey, can we have some of your oil? And they said, well, we're not going to have enough. So you go and buy some for yourself. And so when they left... Unfortunately, that's when their friends came, and everyone who was ready for them with their own light was brought in for the feast. See, we're kind of a lot like those people, that we're kind of like the women who are waiting for the couple to come, especially the bridegroom, because he's, in a way, he's a lot like Jesus, that we should always be ready for Jesus, right? That we should always be ready for him, because when we're ready for him, we can always learn about him and learn about all of his love for us. And we want to be ready for Jesus, right? Yeah? Do you think that we could pray about that? Let's fold our hands and bow our heads. Dear Jesus, Jesus, thank you you for your love love. and help us us to always always be be ready for you. Amen. Amen. All right, before you go back to your seats, would you like a piece of candy? Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. We sing our sermon hymn.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm sure that all of you have heard the phrase, just the simple words of, be prepared. I'm sure that a lot of us have heard that throughout our lives and we thought, well, we can prepare for whatever comes our way in life. That we need to be ready for any ongoing turmoil. That I've heard that you need to have at least two months' supply of food in your pantry just in case something terrible happens. The same goes for other household necessities like uh, tissue paper, battery soap, and many of us keep a certain supply of these things in our homes regardless of the thought of being prepared or not. Thinking about being prepared, and especially this lesson this morning, it always reminds me of a movie from the late 90s called Blast from the Past. In that movie, there was a married couple that had prepared for the worst, and they feared what was going to happen. This was during the 1960s. The United States and Russia, they were thinking of going to war, and there was always the concern of nuclear missiles being used. And so, during the movie, warning sirens go off one night, and they head to their fallout shelter. And an unfortunate incident with a plane overhead crashes on the property, and it seals them inside of their bunker to protect them from nuclear radiation for 30 years. Even though it was an accident that led to the circumstance, the couple had food, supplies, and even a garden in their bunker that would last them and their unborn child for those 30 years. They were prepared for what could happen. In our Gospel reading this morning, Jesus told a parable about ten virgins who were waiting for the bridegroom to come and to take them to the wedding feast. Five of these women thought ahead and were prepared. The other five were not. The ones who were prepared had brought extra oil for their lamps to make sure that they had enough for when the bridegroom would come and bring them to the feast. The five who weren't prepared, when they had fallen asleep and waiting, they didn't realize that their lamps had run out of oil while they slept. They begged the other women to give them some of their oil, but they knew that there wouldn't be enough for everyone. So they told the unprepared women to go and buy more for themselves. And while they were away, the bridegroom came, and the prepared women were taken to the wedding feast, and the doors to the building were shut. The other women came back and called to be let in, but they were refused. And Jesus ends the parable by saying, Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This parable and like several others that Jesus told was about the kingdom of heaven. The message he was telling to his disciples is is one that everyone should take to heart. That we live in a world that is rather time sensitive. We have to get out of bed at a certain hour. We have to get ready for work. We have to leave the house by a certain time to get to work. And then to come back home and make dinner before it gets too late. We are often hurrying between things because we want to make sure that we're prepared, that we'll be on time. But what about being ready for God? I'm sure that there are some people out there who think that they can live their lives however they want, that they're free to do as they please until they find themselves on their deathbed. They think that it's at that moment that that is the time to confess their sins and repent of what they've done, and that they'll stop rejecting Christ. However, the world doesn't work that way. We're reminded all too often how short and precious life really is. 
Something horrible could just be around the corner that can change our lives forever. From natural disasters to wars and everything else in between, many lives are lost before they thought they would go. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Jesus said it well. We try to fool ourselves sometimes. We think that we know everything that is coming. We're surrounded by knowledge and technology, but none of us know for certain when our own time will come. So Jesus tells us to be ready. What does being ready look like? Do we need to constantly be confessing our sins? Do we need to rack our brains endlessly to think if we ask to be forgiven of a particular sin that we've done? And then what about the sins we don't even know about? We don't have to worry like that. God and God alone knows each and every one of us and all the sins that we've committed. If left to ourselves, we would be in trouble. We can't account for all the sins that we've done in our lives. No matter how hard we try, it will never, ever be enough. But that's why we have Jesus Christ. All who believe in Him will be saved from judgment for their sins. Jesus steps in for us and shows our Heavenly Father that we are His children too, pure and holy, washed clean by Jesus' own blood when He died on the cross. Because of Jesus, God forgives us. And we have certainty of that forgiveness through His Word, through the Gospel. We have certainty through the sacraments that He has given to us, baptism and the Lord's Supper. They are physical reminders of the promise of forgiveness and eternal life that awaits us. Being prepared for Christ means to believe in Him, to go to Him with your every trouble, your every need. Pray. He's listening. You don't have to worry about everything. You don't have to worry about covering every single sin that you've done. He knows what's happening in your life. You can be assured that He forgives you of your sins. You can always look to your baptism as a reminder that you are forgiven. You can be reminded of that promise that never ever goes away. And whenever you come to the Lord's table and receive the body and blood of Christ, you are forgiven of your sins. And that reminder of God's promise is always with you. We never know when life will take an unexpected turn. But we can always be prepared for what lies ahead because of Jesus. We don't know the day nor the hour but our souls are prepared through Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the true faith of Christ Jesus, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. We now make profession of our Christian faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please rise. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord.
In our prayers this morning, after each petition that ends with, Lord, in your mercy, we respond with, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, you are our help and deliverer. We bring to you the prayers and petitions of your people, that you may grant us all things needful and guard us against all things harmful. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, preserve your people from believing that you are pleased with us because of our works or ceremonies. Granted that uh, what we do in worship and prayer may proclaim salvation in Christ and in Christ alone. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you bestow favor and honor and withhold nothing from those who walk uprightly. Bless parents and those who teach children your ways, that generations to come would love your promises, walk in your truth, and dwell in your house. Lord, in your mercy. Righteous God, you despise corruption and command justice. Embolden our rulers and all in authority to enact and defend measures that preserve peace and provide justice for all. We also ask that you would bless and protect our police officers, firefighters, disaster relief workers, medical personnel, and members of our armed forces, especially Valerie Hosteller and Hank Peening. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, give comfort, peace, strength, and healing to all who suffer in heart, mind, body, or soul. Hear us as we especially pray for Carter and Xander Herzl, Joseph May, Rhonda Fike, Lois Upton, Aaron Peening, Tara Gall, Ken Burkhart, Angela's father Ron Stone, and friends Hannah and Alex, for the Andersons' neighbor Anthony, and for continued recovery for Rodney Bronzeroth, for Krista's friend Nancy Nevis, for Dave and Eileen's daughter-in-law Rita, and for Ron and Caroline's daughter Laura and her family. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, grant that we may not grieve as those who have no hope, but rejoice and encourage each other in the promise of the resurrection to life everlasting. Strengthen and comfort all people and families who mourn and keep them ever mindful of your promise of eternal life with you. Lord, in your mercy. God of our salvation, we know neither the day nor the hour of Christ's return, but we know that he has died and risen again to open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Until that day, preserve us in faith and guard us from temptation. Do not let us be caught unprepared for his coming. Let us live our days in loving service and joyful expectation of the life of the world to come. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we now collect our offerings.
we pray as Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. You may be seated. Again, good morning and welcome to all in worship today with us. I have uh, several announcements this morning. Uh, join us uh, for a Bible study as we continue our study on the book of Ephesians uh, after some fellowship time this morning. Also, another reminder that the Committee for Bethlehem's 125th anniversary would like you to share a favorite memory of a time here in the church. So if you would like to write, print, or even share a picture of the event, please drop it off in the box in the narthex. Also, uh, Thrivent and Mercy Meals of Lincoln have partnered up to coordinate a community event. They will be packaging meals to send to the children and families in Maui who suffered the effects of the wildfires. Uh, Thrivent and Mercy Meals are seeking volunteers to help them assemble and reach their 100,000 meals goal. And this will be happening uh, Saturday, November 18th from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. at Messiah Lutheran Church with the address on the back of your bulletin. 
If you'd like to sign up to volunteer, uh, more information is on a flyer in the fellowship hall. Also, the funeral for uh, Joanne Bosher t- will be tomorrow at 11 a.m. Uh, here at Bethlehem. Uh, this will be followed by a meal at uh, the Legion Hall and then interment at uh, the uh, St. John Cemetery at 2 p.m. Uh, also, visitation, uh, it is tonight. Open visitation will be at uh, Zapka Purdue Funeral Home uh, from 1 to 8 p.m., or 1 to 8.30 p.m., my, excuse me, and visitation with the family from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Are there any announcements this morning that I may have missed? <laughs>